Thursday's third video for you is we'll have a detailed look at Jawar Muhammad's interview in this video. He appeared on a YouTube channel a few minutes ago. Ubuntu TV, a YouTube channel interviewed him. What is Jawar saying about Fano, about Tigray, Romo Liberation Army, Abiy Ahmed? What is the solution proposed by Jawar? Has Jawar learnt anything from his uh, imprisonment? Is he a changed politician now? Uh, what he is saying, is it uh, applicable? Uh, is it doable? We will try to analyze Jawar's interview in detail. Uh, I have been saying that Jawar should talk directly. Uh, he was speaking through other persons. now. He is talking directly to the people of Ethiopia. Uh, he appeared on Ubuntu TV and now he is on Romia Media Network. Second interview is underway there. We'll have a look at the first interview of Ubuntu TV. Uh, second uh, new story is about uh, another Ethiopian journalist who was arrested today. Today, we know that uh, Tamaskan Dasalin was arrested. Uh, then, two hours after the arrest of Tamaskan Dasalin, another journalist was arrested. Uh, thirdly, a kid who was missing in the Amhara region, it, it was being said that he was kidnapped by security forces because his father was a Fano member and uh, security forces were uh, putting pressure upon uh, the parents that they should uh, uh, report at the police station. Uh, the kid has been recovered. He has met uh, uh, with his parents. And last, Ethiopian PM Abi uh, was in Nigeria yesterday. And today he arrived in Equatorial Guinea. Uh, when he was in Nigeria, some lawmakers, at least one lawmaker there, talked about Tigray. What did he say? Firstly, was Jawar Muhammad, Oromo politician, the vice chairman, newly elected vice chairman of Oromo Federalist Congress, released from prison at the start of this year remained largely silent uh, and uh, there were rumors that he had stuck a deal with PM Abi, that he was uh, working to mediate between Ethiopian government and Roma Liberation Army. Today he broke his silence. Uh, he was interviewed. What did he say? Firstly, what uh, he said, we'll have a look at that, then we'll analyze it. First question was asked about his prison experience. He said uh, prison experience was tough, but uh, he was happy that he was there for a cause, for the struggle. And he was happy that he was not part of uh, war in uh, Ethiopia, which broke out when he was in prison. Secondly, he talked about his silence. Why did he remain silent? He said, then when he was in prison, there only government uh, TV channels uh, were available. So he didn't know what was happening when he was in prison. He didn't know what was happening uh, outside the prison. So he came out. Then he updated himself with uh, the situation in Ethiopia, law and order, security, ethnic issues. And uh, he was able to get the whole picture. So he uh, said that he was trying to cover the information gap uh, which he was uh, suffering from uh, because he remained in prison. So once he uh, became well aware of uh, the conflicts, the problems, uh, now he is ready to speak. Then he was asked a question about deal. Uh, that uh, has he stuck a deal with PM Abi? He denied. He said no deal. Any meetings with PM Abi? Again, he said he did not have any meeting with Ethiopian PM Abi. 
But he said that his differences with Abi Ahmed were political. So if for peace uh, he had to meet uh, Abi, uh, Jalmaro, Debrasian, he will meet uh, to put an end to conflicts. He was asked a question about wars in Tigray, Oromia and uh, Amhara. Very important point he made. He said that uh, these conflicts were the result of mismanagement of reforms. He said when EPRDF alliance was dismantled, after that a transitional government was to be put in place and then a dialogue was uh, to start. TPLF uh, must have been integrated in Ethiopian political system. But transition could not be completed. TPLF distanced itself from Ethiopia and then a war broke out. First it was in Oromia, then uh, it was in Tigray and lastly it is uh, in Amhara, still in Oromia as well. He was asked a question about Fano, that in Amhara region operation against Fano is underway. He said, uh, you can disarm Fano, you can't change their minds. So what is required is a very cautious approach to engage the people through dialogue, through negotiations. Force is not a solution in the Amhara region. Then he was asked a question about national dialogue and he reiterated his party's position, OFC position, that uh, all groups must be part of national dialogue, OLA, TPLF, um, armed groups, political parties, all should be part of national dialogue and before that war should come to an end. Then all should sit together and find a way out of this crisis. He talked about economy as well that uh, if there is insecurity there won't be any foreign investment, there won't be any business, economy will keep on suffering and uh, he made another very important point. He said this uh, strategy uh, of crushing and destroying the opponent must come to an end. People should not think, groups, people in power, that uh, they can crush the other side, they can destroy the other side. It leads to further conflicts. Now, Let's analyze uh, Jawar's interview. Right now he's all peace. He's talking uh, about peace. He's calling for talks, negotiations, engagement, no use of force. But question is, is it doable uh, or not? Uh, what he is proposing is very uh, commendable. It should happen. But question is if parties are not ready to listen to the things like Jawar is saying, what next? If uh, groups want to remain armed, if they don't want to surrender, if they don't trust any authority, any forum, what will happen? Uh, his uh, thoughts are ideal, what I can sum up, that his thoughts are ideal and that is what other leaders should uh, think like. Is it doable? I think uh, Ethiopia should move towards this uh, ideal scenario. At least efforts should be made. It's a difficult path, no doubt about that. There are so many problems, so many issues, so many spoilers in different conflicts in Tigray, Amhara, uh, Romia, that uh, path to peace is difficult. But uh, at least Jawar did not speak against any group, any party, any region in his talk. 
and he did not talk as if he was an Oromo politician. He talked like an Ethiopian politician. He covered all the conflicts, uh, did not speak against Amhara region, Amhara politicians, Fano. So that's why I think a good start uh, after his uh, imprisonment, uh, after his lease. Uh, he has changed a little, it seems. People would say that uh, he might have struck a deal with Ethiopian PM. That is why he is uh, proposing engagement, talks, dialogue. No, he is proposing dialogue with the participation of all armed groups, all political parties. Uh, and OFC further says that this dialogue must be uh, uh, organized, uh, monitored by some independent bodies. So I would say that Jawar's first start, it's Jawar's start uh, of a new political career after his release. Start is not bad. Let's see uh, how, uh, how will other groups, other parties respond to Jawar's call for peace. What will OLA say? What will Tigray say? What will Fano Amhara regional government say? We'll update you in coming videos. The second new story is about another Ethiopian journalist who was arrested a few hours ago. His name is Yayiso Shimalis. Uh, he works uh, with Ethio Forum, a YouTube channel. Uh, Yayiso Shimalis was arrested last year too. Once again, he's in custody. Today, two journalists were arrested. Uh, Tomas Kandasalin was arrested, uh, Fiti magazine editor, and then Yeso Shimedis has been arrested. Uh, uh, so far, his uh, family has not been notified about his whereabouts. Thirdly, a kid who was missing in the Amhara region uh, has been recovered, you can say. Uh, it was being said that uh, security forces uh, kidnapped him because his father was a Fano member and uh, it was a way of putting pressure upon parents. Uh, his father was on the run. Uh, then we saw social media campaign. The child now has uh, been recovered. He has met uh, his parents. Last Ethiopian PM Abi was in Nigeria yesterday. Today he is in Equatorial Guinea, where a conference of African leaders is underway. When he was in Abuja, Nigeria, a member of parliament there spoke about Tigray. He called for solution to Tigray conflict. He urged Ethiopian PM to find solution. His name is Senator Shehu Sani. Uh, and there, uh, in a statement, he said that uh, uh, Ethiopia was uh, the pride of Africa and it should never, it must not fail. But PM Abi must find a peaceful solution to Tigray conflict. So Tigray uh, was mentioned in Nigeria yesterday. Today he is in Equatorial Guinea, uh, its capital Malibu, where he will attend uh, uh, African Union conference about coups, about uh, terrorism and other security issues. Thank you for watching.